after five years of development, Immortals of Avium has landed, a debut project from Ascendant Studios, with the distinction of being the first game not developed by Epic to use Unreal Engine 5 on console. A few points up front. To start, as a UE 5.1 title on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, it brings the very latest Unreal Engine technologies with it. Most notably, we get a use of Nanite and Lumen, the result being richly detailed geometry and real-time lit landscapes. Secondly, and impressively, this is also a 60 frames per second experience on console, so in a break with the trends these days, there's no mode toggle to speak of in Immortals of Avium right now, there's no alternative 30fps quality option, and it targets 60fps out of the box on every machine. And the final point, there's no last gen PS4 or Xbox One versions of the game. Immortals takes advantage of the rapid NVMe storage and RDNA2 architecture of current gen machines to get the most out of its UE5 features. So as a current gen 60fps title supporting Unreal Engine 5, does Immortals of Avium deliver? How do its visuals stack up between the three consoles in focus today? And to what extent does the frame rate hold to its 60fps target? Let's find out. To cut to the chase, Immortals of Avium has plenty of visual high points. We have the vast backdrops of its tutorial, a sweeping mountain range lit in real time thanks to Lumen. We get the opening city of Lucium, a geometrically complex sprawl of houses, markets, bridges, windmills, NPCs, you name it, the details stack up and up. And it's here that UE5's Nanite technology helps in rendering the entire city in real time while keeping the frame rate target at 60. Beyond this, each later chapter presents almost as a self-contained showcase for Unreal Engine 5, from the siege at the city gates, filling the horizon with particle effects, to the ruins area, which is replete with trees and waterfalls, there's a great sense of variety. And the good news? Speaking with the team at Ascendant Studios directly, it seems Nanite and Lumen work on console just the same as on PC. In achieving these huge sprawling vistas, and in lighting it all in real time, PS5, Series X and S get all the same benefits. All of which brings us to Immortals' first and most obvious drawback, image quality. Because despite UE5 realising the team's often beautiful art direction, the game isn't always flattered by its chosen scaling method. First, the basics. PS5 and Series X targets 4K using AMD's FSR 2.1 temporal upscaling. The base resolution this is scaling from though is a much lower figure, at 1280x720 on each. Every shot tested so far comes in at 720p, on camera cuts in cinematics or at the screen's edges in gameplay, so it points to FSR 2's ultra performance mode being used, or in other words 33% scale of the target 4K output. And honestly, in still frames, in static shots, it does look better than that number might suggest. It resolves pretty nicely. Inevitably though, any movement, especially with fine detail on screen, produces clear scaling artifacts. We get this visual noise, almost like a fizzling effect. Now even more notable is the state of Xbox Series S. Again, this version targets 60fps and resorts to FSR2 scaling to get there. The base resolution here though comes in at around 768x436, resulting in a much blurry image and even more pixel breakup than the other two machines. As it stands, Immortals has rough edges on all three machines, but more so on Series S. For example, the specular highlights on the city's gold decals break up easily, and even the detailing on our hand here turns into this pixelated noise any time we switch amulets. Ultimately, these rough spots don't flatter the game's often quite eye-catching art design. Now, it's worth noting the FSR2 mode is adaptive, adjusting based on PS5 or Series X or S's output resolution. So for example, by outputting either PS5 or Series X at 4K, the FSR mode is set to Ultra Performance, or 33% scale 720p. But supposing you have a 1080p monitor connected, the game switches to FSR Quality Mode instead, or in other words, 66% scale of 1080p. In the end, this puts us right back at that base 720p resolution. Now, in theory, your output resolution could affect the frame rate, even if marginally, given FSR2's target resolution is a factor for performance. 
So I did the legwork here and comparing 1080p and 4K output modes on PS5, in truth, there's very little difference either way. More on the performance testing later on, but there's not much to split the readouts here based on your output resolution alone. In terms of design, Immortals of Avium has another unique twist, it being a magic-themed first-person shooter. It's a welcome break from the well-worn staple of guns, guns, and more guns in modern shooters, of course, and it's great to see. Here, blasting all manner of spells from each hand creates a unique technical workout for PS5 and Series X. Particle effects, transparencies fly in all directions, and in battle, it becomes a spectacular deluge of color and sparks, often overwhelming the screen. All of this effects work leverages Unreal Engine 5's Niagara system to manipulate the same effect asset for different results. The only odd point I've noticed, speaking on volumetric effects, is Godray's render at a noticeably low resolution on PS5 and Series X. And on another note, to nitpick a little bit, certain effects also update at just 30 FPS. Specifically looking at this effect in the sky, the 30 FPS update here stands out when the gameplay overall runs at 60. In summary then, before we get to the comparisons and frame rate testing, it's clear Immortals of Avium's technical delivery is somewhat mixed. The world has an incredible sense of scale, its effects splash across the screen in proud excess, and it's all very well realized on Unreal Engine 5. But then, image quality on PS5, Series X, and in particular Series S, don't show it all in the best light. There are issues with low quality effects, 30 FPS elements too, and there's also what appears to be a bug resulting in select enemies and NPCs appearing without any shadows at all. You name it, from guards to major bosses, at times no shadow materializes to bed them into the scene. All of these issues apply to PS5, Series X and S alike as of patch 1.02, the day one patch, though Series S has additional quirks, with more texture pop in generally. Plus, I also experienced a crash within the first 10 minutes of play there. So yes, credit where it's due. Immortals of Avium aims high with its effects and environmental design, but there's no ignoring the fact it also has its fair share of technical issues at launch. To the comparisons then, and resolution-wise, we already know the score. PS5 and Series X run at a matching 720p up against Series S's 436p. Each version uses FSR 2 to scale up to 1080p or 4K depending, and the turnout is much as you'd expect. Series S has a visibly less clear image, more prone to pixel breakup, but it does go deeper. If we focus just on the Xbox machines here, almost every aspect of the game's visual design is dropped to setting on Series S. First up, there's world detail. In the ruins area, grass, rocks, and entire trees are stripped out of the scene. Sometimes the contrast is pretty huge as well. Now, Series S does push for 60 FPS, just like Series X and PS5, but to get there has clearly involved a big visual hit, leaving it with much more barren looking environments. Another example is in the garrison of Chapter 3. The wood planks on the floor, the flags around those trenches are all removed. You'll also notice geometry, shadow, and object level of detail settings are drawn back, resulting in more pop-in on the left side. The list of visual cutbacks goes on for Series S, and it's fascinating to see how far Ascendant Studios went to keep its performance up to scratch. For one, you'll notice a lower setting for shadows. In this spot specifically, there was zero filtering to the shadow, which reveals its resolution, and yes, Series S takes a visible drop in quality. Next along, Series S appears to use a lower volumetric lighting preset, creating more aliasing on those streaks of light. Also, texture quality, in places at least, takes a hit along with the overall quality of certain effects. The rest of the cutbacks are less obvious, I will say, so screen space reflections, SSR, and ambient occlusion are close in quality between the Xbox machines. In fact, the reflections in these puddles would appear similar if not for the missing geometry and grass detail nearby. Overall then, the biggest downside for Series S is without a doubt the lower image quality, stripped world detail, and extra pop-in. With all that in mind, where does PS5 slot in? Returning to a three-way split, it's pretty simple. PS5 shares all the same settings as Series X. Shadows, textures, world detail, draw distances, you name it, they're broadly identical. Now, 
there is one exception on the game's menu screen. Here, PS5 obviously runs with a higher ambient occlusion setting and also more accurate SSR across the lake in the distance. And inevitably, this also has a direct impact on the frame rate. Check this out. Series S gets away with a flat 60fps line due to all its cutbacks in world detail. Next along, Series X rests in the mid-50s with higher foliage detail, textures and shadows, while PS5 on the right pushes for improved SSR and ambient occlusion on top of that, the result being a drop to 45fps. Now this menu is an odd outlier, and in actual gameplay, the settings align much more closely between PS5 and Series X. The SSR quality is a match in this shot, and the only minor difference I could spot is a slight change to ambient shading on PS5. Otherwise, visually speaking, the two are very close in settings, and certainly a huge leap ahead of Series S. Finally then, let's take a look at performance. Starting with PS5, it's clear 60fps is a well-met target a bulk of the time. Having first-person titles run at 60fps is obviously high on the wishlist at Digital Foundry, and if we're to get only one way to play out of the box, this is the ideal. Except, it's also true, PS5 and Series X, which we'll get to, have issues locking down 60fps all the time. As a baseline, through the first four chapters, it is mostly locked, there are exceptions during cutscenes which at times drop to the 50fps line, around the city, or even the big sieges with dragons flying overhead. It's not perfect in other words, but certainly drops are more acceptable in scripted moments. With PS5's issues become more obvious and glaring is in gameplay though. With any heightened use of spells, or especially during boss battles, the frame rate at times wavers down to 50fps, 40fps, and even just under. The cause is also pretty clear. Overloading the screen with spells across dense, complex environments does the trick. And at the extremes, we have a drop to the 40fps line on the graph. Again, most smaller encounters run perfectly fine on PS5. It's just these crucial moments where we need that 60fps response, the major battles, or set pieces running through the city that show any kind of dip and it's felt in the controls too. Now, all of the above is true of Series X as well. It's mostly 60fps on Series X, with certain cutscenes varying into the 50s. But then, equally, extreme bursts of action drop performance into the 50s and even 40s. However, on balance, Series X's performance profile is better than PS5's overall, by around 5 to 10 FPS. All of which means the sudden lurches in the graph reading are less drastic on Series X, if not completely solved. You'll see this in our run through the city. Again, it's a visible drop, but above the PS5 experience. Bringing Series S into the equation, the frame rate for the 4 teraflop console here goes one of two ways. Firstly, in the city during the opening chapter, it's worse than PS5 and Series X. It's really in this set piece as we run through the streets that performance gets hammered. Here, it trails Series X by as much as 10 FPS as we navigate busy, geometry-heavy areas. But in general play, across this first chapter, Series S still runs at a solid 60 otherwise. Which leads us on to the even better news here. The forest areas and the siege mission of Chapter 3 with the dragons flying overhead actually tend to run better on Series S than PS5 or Series X. So check out this forest battle. We're on PS5, this section runs at between 40 and 50 FPS, on Series S, we're only at worst dropping to the 50fps line. The takeaway being that Series S benefits from its visual cutbacks, its lower native resolution, by playing out at closer to 60fps in select missions. Cutscenes are still prone to big drops on Series S, yes, but for gameplay itself, it's a tighter lock. The three-way split here shows it pretty well. Again, it underlines PS5 as having the bigger issues overall in hitting 60. Overall, Immortals of Avium is one of the most fascinating games I've reviewed in a while, even with its issues. Between the focus on current-gen development, its use of Unreal Engine 5.1 features, Nanite and Lumen, there's a genuine ambition here to push for cutting-edge tech. In fact, tellingly, Ascendant Studios explained it would be difficult, in theory, to port the game back to last-gen PS4 and Xbox One consoles. After all, we've seen it happen recently with Jedi Survivor, but here, it seems the use of Nanite and Lumen would require retooling the game's entire visuals to make it work. 
So then, the push for heavy effects work and complex backdrops lock it to newer formats, and the fact it is built for PS5, Series X and S and PC of course, makes it all that much more special. On the flip side, it's also clear, with all that being said, that Immortals of Avium has technical issues at launch. The image breakup using FSR2 doesn't present the world in the best way possible, in large part stemming from the load based resolutions on PS5, Series X and S. There are shadow bugs, and at times each console struggles to hit 60fps, especially so in big set pieces. That's the console situation, but a bigger question surrounds how the PC version looks and runs today. And for that, my Digital Foundry colleague Don will be looking back with PC coverage in due course. But that's all from me today. For now though, if you did like this tech review, feel free to like or subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell for instant notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net, and to get in touch directly as ever, just use Twitter. But for me for now, Thanks for watching.